RV's Gone Wild. RV's Gone Wild, number 14. That's right, we're back with another RV's Gone Wild. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Let's get on with it. I want to thank Steve and Shelby for sending this in. You might remember them from the Cessna camper that I had many episodes ago. Well, they also rebuilt this whole camper. They tore it to the frame. They, they basically have new tires, axle wheels. They're only using the roof and they've got this attached to their 51 Ford rat rod. Everything in it is upcycled, repurposed right down to the trim. Great job from Steve and Shelby G out in the Finger Lakes, New York. People disappear in the Finger Lakes. My wife actually found this clip on Instagram. Thank you very much, Mrs. RVing with Joe. Look at this crazy one. This actually has some folks driving uh, a Grand Junction RV, a fifth wheel, down the highway with all three slide outs out. Uh, I don't know how this thing didn't get pulled over. This is the most dangerous thing. I can't imagine why they're driving like this. You can see there's all kinds of slide seals hanging on the ground. Um, I'm almost wondering if this was stolen or something. I want to thank Second Wind Trailers for sending us these pics. They included a lot more pics, and there's a link that I'll include in the description. They actually made about 12 of these trailers. They came out really great. So check out the link and check out Second Wind Trailers. Terriel sent this in to us. I have no idea what this hitch is. Please tell me that this is not an actual hitch that can be purchased. It looks like somebody put this together. If anybody recognizes this hitch, please let us know in the comments below. Don't have a lot of background on this. Timothy V sent this in. Clearly a homemade trailer. I wish we had more pics of it. Todd F saw this in Beaverton, Oregon. Seems like it's a homemade uh, rooftop camper. They're big fans of the channel. Thanks for sending this in. And I want to thank all the people who have been commenting and sending me emails, sending me photos. I just don't have the ability to reply to everyone and I can't quite use everyone's pics yet, uh, but I just want to thank you. I, I, it's been really kind words from a lot of people, people who watch every episode. Um, I, I feel it. I love it. I wish I could reply. I'm very, very busy in my day job. So it's a real challenge just to get these videos made, let alone reply to all the emails and deal with all the requests I've been getting. So just keep those emails coming in and comments coming in. I appreciate all the love, everyone. Now check out this one from Tom S. He likes to say his RV has wings. He has a full-size folding e-bike that he keeps in the back of his plane. The, the e-bike itself has a 50 mile range. He can actually recharge it from the plane while he's flying. He has behind the bike as his camping gear. Now the plane only goes 85 miles an hour, but he says he can do so for eight hours in a straight line. That covers a lot of country. He lands out in the remote mountains and camps out overnight using this and then takes off in the morning. That sounds like a real adventure, Tom. Great work. This schoolie looks awesome because it looks like he took a pontoon boat and built it on the top like a deck. Not to mention that it's quite an old rig that's built on. Not sure this thing even runs anymore. Warren S. ran across this setup in a Walmart parking lot in Montgomery, Alabama. He went and took some pictures of it. Uh, apparently this is a truck cab with a 1948 Ford F1. He mounted the cab on a 1996 Dodge 3500 Dually. So it looks a little different on the inside than it does on the outside. The sleepers from an old Peterbilt. Then he cut a Western hauler bed to fit correctly onto the frame. So all the wheels are in place and everything looks appropriate. And the camper is just a regular fifth wheel camper, but what a cool looking setup. I had a few people tell me that they had a hard time figuring out how to subscribe. Hey, that's cool. Not everybody knows all the clicks and tricks of YouTube. So I just wanted to show you if you're looking on your phone here, you can click the subscribe button right here. And if you're looking on your home computer, you should be able to see a subscribe button right here. Just click it and my videos will magically appear in your feed. And next week we're gonna have Star Wars rigs. So if you've got any Star Wars RVs out there, send them my way. Somebody turn this car into a trailer. We wanna thank Daily Slap Fact. Your Daily Slap Fact is actually a YouTube channel. Uh, I'll put a link to it below in the description as well. Uh, they have an interesting sort of uh, fun facts kind of channel going on. But he actually spotted this in Anchorage, Alaska on a Facebook uh, marketplace ad, I think. James D sent us his personal rig. Now I gotta say, I've seen a lot of toads, but I do gotta say, I don't see too many Astier race cars on the back of Class A's. That's quite the toad. Jeff L sent these in. He actually found this down in Mexico, and I guess it's built off a VW thing, but somebody built it into an RV. It's definitely one of a kind. Thanks for sending this in. Thanks for following the channel, Jeff. 
Jim Kemper saw this homemade RV parked at Table Rock Lake, which I guess is in Arkansas, I think. Jim L. found this link to all these odd style uh, RVs. I hadn't quite seen these styles before. I downloaded a couple to show you here, but I'll put a link to all of them in the description below. Thanks for sending these in, Jim. John sent this in. I mean, it is a Ford, and I guess maybe this could be considered an RV. This might be sort of getting outside the range of an RV, but that's all right. I'm gonna let it in anyway. Thanks, John. Josh B. saw this one in Southern Oregon. You thought it looked cool? I think it looks cool too. It's got that 70s vibe. Seems appropriate for Oregon. Now, Kelvin set this in with a great idea. He said, what about RVing dogs? And that's a great idea. So if you've got your RVing dogs out there, if you've got your dogs in the RV, they're part of the family, send your dog pics to me as well. Let me know the names of the dogs. This one's called Peaches. Now I do gotta say, Kelvin, you also mentioned your other dog, Goofy, but I didn't see a pic. So send me a pic of Goofy and I'll put Goofy in next week. My original dogs, Sabrina and Larrabee, here they are. These were the original RVing dogs in my world. They've crossed the rainbow bridge to the great RV in the sky, but I have my two newest dogs, which is Linus and Lizzie, and they've taken to RVing quite well. In fact, the thing I love about Lizzie is when she sees my RV, she gets just as excited as I do. Kenneth S. sent this to us. He says he sees it every year at the State Park in Kentucky where he works. It appears somebody took a Class C and made it into a travel trailer. That's a first. Kirk P. sent this pic to me. He also included a link to their YouTube channel. Their name is Love Hut for Life. This is a home-built camper in Alabama. They travel and build unusual housing all over the country. Go ahead and check out their channel. The link is in the description. Mark Hughes spotted this at a Walmart parking lot in Crossville, Tennessee. Wanted us to all take a look at it. Mark L., who is a regular viewer and has sent in multiple photos, found this one. This is some kind of custom RV. Don't have a lot of information on it, but it's quite wild looking. Michael S. sent this in to us. It's some sort of Mercedes that's been turned into an RV. Patrick W. saw this while he's in the city of Vail, Oregon, just walking around town, starting to see a trend with these Oregon trailers and trucks. Paul sent this in to us. It's his actual Chevy Astro van that he owns and built as a van lifer. He uses it for camping and traveling. And it looks like it might be off-road capable. We sent us some inside pics, Paul. Chris from Rome the Unknown YouTube channel sent this in. I put a link in the description to his channel. He's got this vintage 1980 Ford 250 Coachman 21-footer. From mechanical to interior upgrades, it's all documented on his channel. Check it out. But more importantly, not only does he have this cool rig, but he has an RV tattoo. I mentioned in my last uh, one that I was hoping people would send in any pictures of their RV tattoos they might have. Maybe a lot of people don't have them, but I have one actually. And take a look at this one. It's faded a little bit, but here's what it looked like when it was fresh. Uh, it didn't always heal right, so the colors really kind of dropped out a bit. But uh, this is of Monument Valley. This is called Forest Gump Point, where everybody takes photos of Monument Valley. And Monument Valley was one of my favorite RV trips of all time. It's why I went back there last year uh, to Monument Valley and Valley of the Gods. I'll actually put a link right here to that video if you want to see where I went. But this place meant so much to me that I decided to get a tattoo of it. And if you have any tattoos that relate to RVing or travel, send it my way. Let's see them. Thanks again, Chris from Rome the Unknown for sending this in. I love the tattoo. Love the truck. Robert C. or Robert Carr on YouTube. He actually has the Georgie Boy Swinger 1993. I think I showed this in a previous video I had. I love the idea of stowing a, a pop-up on top. I also like your bicycle built for two with a trailer. We actually had the same thing. I just happened to sell the uh, tandem bicycle recently. If you think driving a trailer and a truck is hard around, try driving a tandem with a trailer around bike paths. And it's time for turducken. I think most of you know that turducken is when you take a turkey and inside it you cook a duck and inside the duck you cook a chicken. It makes for some great cooking, but it makes for some odd towing sometimes. Dan D sent this in to us. It's his own version of turducken. It's kind of hidden turducken. You can't quite see what's going on here in this one pig. This is his friend's turducken. As you can see, he tows the RV, but where that canvas is, there's actually a rollback tow truck. And on there is a Razor side-by-side, -side, two kayaks, and two three-wheeler recumbent trikes. So once he unhooks his trailer, he's able to just tip his bed back and just roll all his vehicles off of there. It's like low profile turducken. And David G sent this in to us. This is South African turducken. In the summer down in South Africa, 
Apparently they're just as crazy as we are here in the States and Canada. So this is a typical South African traducan setup where they got that off-road trailer. They got another trailer. They got bikes on the back. It's a triple tow job. Eric B said this to us. It's sort of like a triathlon turduck in here. He's got the side-by-side -side for the hunting season. He's got the sea dews for the lake camping. He's got the RV. It's sort of is the trifecta of everything you want to do when you go out there and camp, apparently. Kenneth D sent this in. He sent this in showing that Scamp does not endorse this type of towing. And in fact, he himself does not suggest that you tow an extra trailer on the back of a little Scamp. But he does, because it's his Scamp and his truck. Thanks, Ken, for sending this in. Woo! Marty M sent this in us. This is a big old turducken. These are his friends. I guess the person's name is Nomad Neil and Dawn. He operates his RV service upgrade business out of this uh, storage box they built on the back of that heavy duty truck. Marty also showed us his old rig where he carries his four door Jeep Wrangler in the box of this truck. Another specialized turducken. And finally, it's not quite turducken, but this one's gonna get the tip of the hat RVing with Joe gold star award for being the most awesome Ford of the day. There's just something about this beefy rig. Tells me if I had this rig, I could tow any RV I wanted. Robert N sent this in. This is how he used to tow with his fifth wheel and his extra trailer on the back. But now he has a toy hauler. Still wanted to show off his old turducken though, even though it's gone. I want to thank Dave Stovall for sending these in. He sent us a whole lot of picks. I couldn't quite use them all, but I love this turducken here because you got the crawler and the golf cart. You got the trailer. You got a lot of wheels on this turducken. You know what I say? If you measure turducken by wheels, this one's got a pretty high score. And he also sent in this big, mean, heavy duty rig. I guess he owned this freight liner with this big trailer. Not sure what's inside there, but it sure looks mean. This very unique set of pictures came from Adrian A. He comes from Newfoundland. That's a fellow Canadian up here. He's attached some photos of a small eight foot camper that he made. It was designed to be able to be towed behind a snowmobile or an ATV, but it also fits in a half ton pickup. It's wired for 12 and 120 volt power. It's got built in propane furnace, which is great for the winter trips. There's a hatch on the floor so we can actually take it ice fishing and the table folds down to make a twin size bed. What a versatile rig. Great job, Adrian. Alan S. wanted to share the Super C build that he did, built on a C70 from 1979. Actually put it all together. I love it when someone builds their own Super C. Great work. And when I say Super C, I mean a Super C Class RV. If you're not sure what I mean by C Class RV, I've actually got a link right here to a video I did explaining the difference between Class A, Class B, Class C, and all the different types of RVs. Check it out. Somebody anonymously sent this in. It was spotted somewhere in Arizona. Bill N. sent this in. This was his dad's first camper, built in 1936, when his dad was 18 and wanted to do some Southern California desert exploration. It's built on a 1917 Buick chassis, had a chuck wagon style box in the back with a fold down table. And Bill told me he finally subscribed to the channel. So thanks a lot, Bill. Be like Bill. Don't forget to subscribe, everybody. Brett G spotted this cool RV combo in Lake Tahoe, California. Apparently this guy puts together random older cars with an older camper, puts them together and raffles them off. This one was from July, 2022. Cameron saw this cool looking Peter built driving by. He wanted to take a few pictures. Apparently this had a horse trailer attached to it as well, but I like the way he took this camper shell and built it on top of this classic heavy duty transport. Haven't quite seen that before. CJ here has his home built DIY truck camper. It's a home-built truck camper made out of two-inch XPS foam. It fits in a six and a half foot bed. It weighs only 445 pounds, has an air conditioner, sink, a slat couch bed sort of setup, a 12 volt battery system. Great work, dude. And thanks for the support of the channel. You get some kind words in your email. Remember David G, our South African friend? He also sent us this one, an old fashioned RV with one horsepower towing it. Just shows you, you don't need all these fancy trucks. D-Man spotted these different rigs in Calgary, Alberta, fellow Canadian. One of the RVs was labeled security, although I think I would call security if I saw this thing sitting in my parking lot. This other Class C has got its own deck built on the back. I was trying to figure out whether they actually chopped the RV and built the deck or just built the deck off of the back of the chassis. Gray S spotted this. We've got a Tesla truck towing a scamp. It makes sense that it would tow a scamp because these things don't have a very long shelf life on the battery when they're towing. So at least the scamp's a little lighter than your average trailer. But I expect we're going to be seeing more of this in the coming years. Greg L. sent this in to us. 
He showed us what he started with and what it looks like now. He says he's not a professional at all, but it just shows you what you can do if you got a little bit of handy skills. Thanks everyone for your support. Thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate all the comments I've been getting. Don't forget I've got these RVs Gone Wild videos coming out just about every weekend. And I also have a lot of my camping videos coming out now. Some of you watch my channel for the RVs Gone Wild. Some of you watch my channel for the camping videos. I bet some of you watch both. Thanks everyone.